some simple red flags and green flags. And if you recognize those, you can wipe out a lot of that frustration right, right when you start. Thank you so much for joining us again on Second Act TV. I want to welcome back Sandy Weiner, the dating coach, founder of Last First Date, author of Choice Points in Dating, and podcast host. Sandy, thank you for being here again. <laughs> it's great to be back. Always love having you here. And today we have a conversation that is so needed and so gosh people either hate it or love it all kinds of opinions and that is about online dating why are we talking about online dating again because so many people in our comments i, I want to get back out there but i don't want to i've heard so many horrible things so what i'd like to do today uh, sandy is Go back again on some other conversations that we've had about online dating. Lots of people are just getting started. What kind of tips can we give? What do they need to know to make this process one less frustrating and more successful? Yeah, first of all, mindset is everything. And if you're coming in with all that negativity that it's filled with scammers and losers and liars and married people and catfishers and everything else that is going to turn you off immediately. That's all you will, you will look for. And it's probably all you will attract. However, there is so much more online than all of those things. And in fact, when you have a good attitude, you barely see those things or you move past them really quickly. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to just get that out of the way, the mindset you have, how you see it, the fact that it's a meeting tool, not a dating tool, but a meeting connecting tool. Right. And it's, if you're over 40, 30, if you're out of college, basically, how are you meeting people if you're not out socializing in, in public and being really social? Like you could be socializing and still not going on dates because you're making conversation that isn't leading to dates. Well, and, and, and to your point is that uh, it was an interesting study I came across, or st uh, statistics, I should say. I'm going to link to that because I want people to see it. I'm only going to mention one, and that is that individuals between the ages of 43 and 58 found the most success with online dating. And this is a, a, a one poll Forbes health. I mean, it's a, it's a reputable source. You can, you can check it out, see what you think. So there is, there is substance there, even if you, even if you hate it and believe me, we get it. We get the frustrations. We agree with you on a lot of it, but like Sandy said, if you're just, there's just some simple red flags and green flags. And if you recognize those, you can wipe out a lot of that frustration right, right when you start. So let's get into the red flags and green flags of online dating and, and, and keep those right in front of you. Sandy, the first one here, uh, no photo, photos look different, photos too perfect. And then of course, the corresponding green flag is that you put effort into your photos, into your bio. Let, let's explain what, what we mean by that. Yeah. So a lot of people don't post a photo at all. I would say move right past those because they haven't done anything. I mean, we all have phone cameras like, and they're yeah. really good and <laughs> there's no excuse yeah. not to take photos, even if it's a selfie, which I don't recommend unless you're really great at selfies. But a lot of people also post photos that all look like they're different people. They post photos from when they were 20 and now they're 60. Mm -hmm. They post photos with different color hair or different length of hair. Or right. for men, they want to post pictures where they had hair, <laughs> but they're really bald. Like we don't, we want to know who these people are. And then the photos that are too perfect, that's usually a, a photo that was stolen from somebody else. It's like a model, you know, if it's too good to be true, it's usually fake. But so what, what does it mean to put effort into your photos? It means get a photo shoot. I, I recommend actually taking this seriously because if finding love is important to you, get somebody or go outside with your friend who's really good at photography and get pictures Take pictures from all different parts of your life because your pictures tell a story. Mm -hmm. And the best pictures are the ones where somebody can comment, like you on horseback, if you're a horseback rider, you on your bicycle, you taking a hike, 
walking your dog. Mm -hmm. I have a picture of me reading a book and the book mm -hmm. has a title that people comment on. I mean, you could do anything like that. You mm -hmm. want to show who you are today, not mm -hmm. 16 years ago, not 35 years ago, not six hair colors ago. Yeah, the, the photo, it, it, I mean, it, it's really, it, it can be so easy. Cause like you said, with the cameras we have now, they are so good. And it's almost, it's almost hard to take a bad picture <laughs> if you just put a little bit of effort into it. Let, let's quickly touch too on the bio. What, what makes a good and bad bio, like one that you would just pass up right away and one that, hmm, let's read this. So the bios that are the red flag bios are the ones that start with negativity, the ones that say, ask me anything. And that's their entire bio. <laughs> it's like, ask you anything. I, I don't know anything about you. Where would I even start? And so people don't realize that starting with what I don't want is going to just paint you as a victim and somebody who's angry. Well, I certainly wouldn't want to date you. Also, people who write too much, they'll do a whole bio about like their entire life. Your bio's purpose is just to tell a little bit about several parts of your life that are important to dating you, not your resume, not your work history. <laughs> Not everything about your family history, not like all your gallbladder surgeries, which <laughs> believe me, people put stuff like that in there yeah. and too much. Like it, mm -hmm. it's to reach that, that sweet spot is mm -hmm. just a little bit about parts of you, you know, maybe, and, and not a bunch of adjectives. So mm -hmm. people tend to do that where they put I am this and that and this and that and I'm nice and I'm kind and you all sound the same or I'm just as comfortable in a little black dress as I am in an evening gown and I mean oh, a pair yeah. of jeans, the same thing with a little black dress. I, you know, it's, any cliches are just eye rollers at this mm -hmm. point. Be a little original, show your personality, show your quirks. Don't try to be mm -hmm. like everyone else. I mean, I could talk about this for an entire segment, mm -hmm. but the bio is important because people are going to look at your pictures first, but then they're hopefully going to read about you and know a little bit about you to decide if they want to even engage. So the big red flag is just a lack of a bio, really. If you don't put any effort into it, then it, I don't know what that says, but it's not, it's not worth pursuing. It's not mm -hmm. worth pursuing. So, in, well, point number two, and, and really you pretty much covered it, uh, you know, the negativity or anything like, you know, sexism, racism, uh, anger in the profile. You yeah, absolutely. I mean, nothing turns people off more than what I don't want. Don't apply. Don't even message me if you're this, this, and this, and this, and yeah. this. And yeah, it just paints you in a bad light and makes people not want to engage. I certainly would never want to start a conversation with anger. And mm -hmm. I think people believe that it's showing what their belief system is. Mm -hmm. And I want you to know that I have standards, but really mm -hmm. what it does is turns people off. Yeah. Well, and, and to, you know, in, in this day and age, like the whole politics thing, you know, don't even contact me if you're this or if you're that. And while you may not want to pursue a relationship with somebody who's not, on, you know, I, it is very contentious, of course, and I get that. You don't have to put it, you don't have to put it up front. You'll know right away because it says so much more about you than what your, uh, what your political beliefs are. So uh, yeah, be, be, be cautionary about that. Don't turn mm -hmm. people off that may be just like you, but they just don't like the way you come across. Well, and then once you get past the profile, you, you know, this is somebody you're interested in. The next big red flag is if there's no effort made to get offline to meet in person. Let's uh, explain that a little more. Yeah, I think a lot of people just kind of hang out on the online dating site and they are just, how's, it, how's your day going? Good, how's your day going? Pretty good. And this could go on for a really long time. And it's a not only bad because you want to date and you're looking for dates, you're not looking for a pen pal, but it's also boring and mm -hmm. It's draining. I mean, personally, I don't want to put any effort into something like that. So yeah, I mean, if 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 they're not wanting to get offline, something is wrong, and it absolutely, you know, it it, it could be a, a scam. It could be, but it it's mostly just people who don't know how to move a conversation. 
I would say that that's more of the norm. And my, my advice is if you are looking to get offline, you need to say something. I would say after two messages, if there is enough interest there, mm -hmm. ask to continue that conversation on a phone call to see if mm -hmm. there is a connection. Mm -hmm. I believe in that phone call because you can vet somebody and not waste your time on a date mm -hmm. if you don't have anything to say on a phone call. So that's your kind of vetting system. I have seen people get into these long conversations that are that should not be on text. There's no context to mm -hmm. this conversation. You don't know this person. You've now opened up about your family history, about your children, about whatever. And it's like, why? Mm -hmm. You may never meet this person. That's a lot of energy right. expended. So right. say what you want. See if they follow through. If they don't, get off this yeah. message, unmatch, block, get off. So again, the red flag, if they're willing to get on a call, I mean, the green flag, if they're willing to get on a call, if they're willing to meet you, continue. That's a great, great green flag. Red flag, you're not getting off. You can avoid all kinds of frustration that online dating will cause you if you just know that, remember that. Keep that list in front of you. <laughs> uh, you made a really good point here that um, overtly sexual talk or immediate use of terms of endearment, again, is a big, a big red flag. Yeah. I mean, women are always telling me if the women I work with, like, I'm so uncomfortable. He called me beautiful. And we've never met or we met once or whatever. But somebody who doesn't know you, who's mm -hmm. everything is, hey, gorgeous, hey, beautiful, yeah. um, hey, handsome, whatever. And the the sexual stuff, mm -hmm. people will ask blatant sexual questions that are really inappropriate for a first conversation. And uh, you don't need to engage with people who cross boundaries, unless that's what you're online for, and then go ahead and have sex with whoever you want. But mm -hmm. most people who are looking to go on dates right. and, and actually meet somebody that they're going to have a serious relationship with, then you need to know what you want. Mm -hmm. And you need to stick to those things, because otherwise, yeah. you're just going to waste a lot of time and effort. Right. And again, to avoid that, you just don't engage. I mean, is it, is it, is it rude? Is it, uh, you know, is it frustrating? Is it, yeah, of course it is, but just get past it. It's not, this is not online dating. This is the person again, to me, online dating, you know, is, is, is the greatest thing that ever happened to dating and, and, and the worst, the greatest, because now you can meet so many more people that you ordinarily would not have. And the worst, because you're opening yourself up to a lot more rejection than you normally would not have. And that's, I think what we need to remember. It, you said that in the beginning, it's a tool. <laughs> and if you know how to work it right, it might just work for you. Well, and finally, number five, the, the big red and big, uh, a green flag is consistent green flag and inconsistent communication once you've established a communication basis with someone tell me what you mean by that yeah so somebody has been in touch with you and then they start speaking to you less it takes them five days to get back to you that's inconsistent communication mm -hmm. they sound like they're so interested in you and then silence and you're like hey you still there you know <laughs> look people could be busy with work they sometimes people don't check their notifications I have mine turned off you have to decide if you want to have your notifications on or off but you don't know what the other person has maybe there was a family emergency who mm -hmm. knows but maybe they're just not interested and they're giving right. you this lack of consistency that's when it becomes a red flag. And so mm -hmm. don't put so much energy into a person you don't know. I think mm -hmm. that's really the bottom line is be aware, be conscious of all these things, know what you want and need, know that you can't make somebody into something they're not, but a person is not their profile. You mm -hmm. do not know them until you meet them and get to know them. Pay attention to these red flags and green flags and don't be afraid to block people. It's not just about not engaging. I would say just block them. If you're not interested, you don't want to see them come up mm -hmm. again in your feed. Yeah. So get rid of them. Don't, mm -hmm. you know, you don't need to see them again. And I think, you know, you, you'll enjoy the process so much more. Well, what, what I try to remember and try to... Uh, 
you know, have come across is that online dating really is just a way to get into real life relationships. It, it's not to stay online. And it, it, it's gotten a bad name for all kinds of good reasons. I get that. And a lot of those reasons, a lot of those experiences are self-imposed by a lot of the things that we have talked about. Be realistic, you know, how have you presented yourself online? How, you know, could it be you? <laughs> are you bringing a bad attitude? And again, you don't have to go online. No, no, nobody does. It's just, it is such a huge part of the way people meet and the way you can meet other people. Then don't just toss it, you know, toss the baby out with the bathwater, I think is the saying. And that's where I know Sandy and I come from uh, when we have these conversations. What else would you like to add here? Anything important I didn't ask or people need to know? People always ask which are the best sites. And okay. so I just want to touch on that because I think that's another reason why people feel online dating doesn't work. I would say there is no perfect site for anybody. Try a site. If you don't like it, try another one. Be on two sites at once. Be on a swiping site and be on a desktop site. You know, it depends on your preferences. I have a client who just went on Hinge and she's in her early 70s and she had a lot of fears. And so she got on Hinge, got overwhelmed. And she said, you know what? I think I'm going to go back on Match because I know Match really well and I'm comfortable yeah. with it. And I said, then do it. Because if being on Hinge is going to stop you from dating and engaging with people, then it's not going to work for you. So Great point. use your common sense again. Try things. Put yourself mm -hmm. out there. You know, it's, it's just a meeting site. It's to connect you with people you would never meet in person. And there are so many people who have found love online. I mean, so many people in the new book that I'm writing have found lasting love. Yes, in Silk, Silk is one of them. Well, and I've said this on other segments. I mean, uh, Paul and I, you know, we we're in a 12 year relationship that started on Match. So yeah, I liked it. I had lots of fun. I know lots of things have changed, but yes, you can meet people online. Sandy, thank you again. You know, a lot of this stuff will come up in, in more segments. Like I said, online dating is, isn't going to go away. So we need to figure out a way to maybe make it more palatable. <laughs> and actually the dating sites are doing that. There's all kinds of stuff going on because they they know that people are, are so frustrated with the, you know, what the state of it is today. So I will link to all of your information. One of the great resources for online dating is your book right there, Choice Points in Dating, as well as if you want some personal help, Sandy's a fantastic coach. Her link uh, is in the show notes below if you want to get in touch with her directly. And Sandy, again, thank you. I look forward to our next conversation on Second Act TV. Mm -hmm.